very welcome to another programme of What Matters with myself, John Prendergast. And as you know, our programmes cover, cover community affairs, environmental, everyone has a platform. We're into politics a few times every week and I'm delighted to be here in the company of a very good friend and colleague and well-known in media circles, Pat Barry. I want to say a very special thank you for production editing, uh, Mary Honan as well, who is extremely well known and very hard working in the media circles. So delighted to be with you both. Pat, Pleasure to see you, John. This is another venture, another diversion in, in many ways, going into politics. What made you stand for it? Said, uh, you're not the only one, and you won't be the last one to ask me <laughs> that question because right. people are, many people are cynical. I, I can be myself as well, sometimes about politics and politicians, mm. but at the end of the day, it's the only system we have to try and get things done in the community and at national level as well. Mm. It's something that has stuck down through the years, but you know, with other, with work and other things, I never really focused on it. But um, I said, if I don't run this time, mm. you know, I'll never do it. So uh, with the encouragement of my friends and uh, my close friends in Shannon area, mm. I um, decided to throw my hat in the ring for the local elections in Shannon Municipal District in County Clare on the 7th of June and I'm running as an independent and my slogan is time for real change mm. my, my, my word, but you know if you look back over the last they say in the Shannon area where I'm running mm. what has been achieved by the local council the last five years or 10 years or 15 years because more or less the same councils are there and you say to yourself look I have the highest regard for most of those councils yeah. Of myself and I know a lot of them personally and they are good decent people whether they're in a party or not you know some of them mm -hmm. are hard working mm -hmm. but change is very 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 slow very slow yeah and there's an urgency now in many areas <coughs> of community life I know in Shannon and in the wider area there's urgent areas to be attended to I'm thinking of the areas like mental health it's just abominable that there isn't more resources put in to mental health it never gets discussed anywhere it's never discussed when i say it's never discussed i mean it's rarely discussed as a serious issue in the community and uh, and recently we had another uh, another tragic death recently again on Shannon. Mm -hmm. Added right. to the many we've had since last uh, August, September of last year up to now. It's just a blight on the community. And we ran a mental health conference in, in January, and which was very successful. That, very successful. Yes. Very well received, Mary, Mary and myself, mm -hmm. and the Airmen Mental Health. So it'll be an annual an annual event if we're around for the next one next year. Thank God. And you <laughs> no, but anyway. Are you with me? <laughs> But we were hoping as a result of that that we build up enough momentum and interest to have at least a 24-hour drop-in centre in Shannon, yes. which is the second biggest urban area in the county outside of Venice. Shannon is the next biggest with 13,000 people. And the population is very, very young as well, you know, in Shannon. And uh, the, and it's increasing as well, the number. So there's, there's thousands of young people in Shannon. So we were hoping that as a result of that initiative that we would have um, a momentum built up to have a 24-hour fully serviced centre in Shannon. Yes. For mm -hmm. people who might feel very, very low yes. and they say, I can, I, can go up to, I can go up to this building and I'll get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a nice warm building, i sit down to be fully serviced and there'll be someone there to talk to. That's the key, isn't it? That's all That's people key. want yeah. uh, as an initial... Mm -hmm. Thing, mm. you know, that's all people, people want. And just on that point there as well, there are many people from my hometown in Glynn that live in Shannon. And the one thing that they're coming across all the time, <coughs> there's a fantastic community there. There is. Yeah. A great community spirit there. And that's lovely to see. And you're going to tap in or try, when you say time for real change, is to give more proper services to the great people of Shannon. And people say to me, uh, well, a council can do nothing. A councillor by themselves can do nothing. And I wouldn't look at it like that at all. I mean, if people decide to give their trust to me and, and elect me to council, I'll be able to work on a 24, full time basis. Yes. 
Qadir Gibayan is really my uh, advocate for on a 24 hour basis for that. But you get it on the floor, you get it on the agenda, you get the, the whole area of Intel 24 hour drop in <coughs> in your channel onto the floor of the council. That's the yes. first step. Mm -hmm. When you get it on the floor of the council and you get support, you win support for it. That's how things get done. I know it's the only system we have, and we have to try and utilize it to the best of our ability and build support, bring along support with you as well, you know, for that initiative. And I would see it once it gets on as a motion and it says it, it, it can be advocated for up along the chain, then into the floor of the doll, etc., and all of that. Yes. And that's how you do it. I know it's frustrating and people are waiting. God, you know, I wish things were different, but they're not. And uh, unfortunately, you know, and and the one thing there is um, just on mental health. It's so so important and personal to many many families in this country because from drug addiction it comes depression, from cost of living crisis yeah. it comes depression, losing their homes, losing their jobs, and does it does it infuriate you, Pat, mm -hmm. to listen to the What's the word? The continual word of positive. We're a very rich country. Um, you know, there's people um, driving new cars and there's great wealth in the country. And one particular on a Claire Bourne show, I very rarely actually listen to RT, but that's a personal thing. Um, but uh, one thing she said was a small cohort of people are finding it hard to make ends meet. I think that's a disgraceful insult. It's a major cohort of people. Well, look, I, I listen to our media, you know. I, I know, yeah. Across the board, plus our platforms, both radio and TV. <laughs> and you do get tired of car jumping, as I call it myself. You do get tired of the same bland statements. The, and when I hear, we are a very rich country. Of course we are. We, you and I, we, I, we acknowledge that. We might never hold it ourselves, but we acknowledge we are. Rich in what? Good point. Well, are, are, are the riches of the country being spent properly? No. Are the resources that we have, we say we have, being spent properly? No. You didn't look at who is spending them on our behalf. Mm. And you look at this state that we're living in. Uh, the ideology of the state and the social policy of this state has been driven by Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael since the foundation of the state, centre right and right wing, whatever you want to call it, look, labels mean nothing really. No, there are many decent people, as I said, in politics in, in those parties. There are many decent people across the board. The, 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 the ideology driven parties, nothing has really changed. When I was growing up in Norcock, where I grew up in, when there was nine of us in a, in a two bedroom house, eight of us, or seven of us before we moved. Seven kids and my mum and dad. Mm -hmm. We had the same problems. We were a very wealthy country. Yeah. Just get on with it. But that, that's not good enough anymore. People are educated. People are more aware. Yes. People are living lives in, in Shannon Town, where I've visited a lot of houses inside the Clare, and I've been invited into a lot of houses. They're living lives of quite desperation. I visited uh, two ladies during the week. And uh, they can't go in their front door or out their back door. It's a holding place, whatever is wrong with the water table around the house. They're pensioners. Yes. Themselves. One of them is on a walker. I, I was laughing, she was laughing, and I was laughing, you know, as well. With them, they had a sense of, you have to have a sense of humor when, when, when adversity strikes, I suppose. It'll get you through somewhat to the next step. But I, I couldn't understand why that situation is there. For so long. Mm. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. But as we know then, when you look then at County Clare, there's 140,000 people living in County Clare. It's small. Mm -hmm. There's 996 mm. people live, employed by Clare County Council to carry out the work on our behalf. To look after the communities and look after the facilities around us as well. Mm. Now, I, I don't understand a mentality whereby this situation is there and you cannot make a phone call. Of course, people are not going to come out just straight away. People don't expect people to come out just straight away. But in the old days when I was growing up in the councils, 
when we were walking to school. And you always say the same for you, John. You see the workmen out on the road, uh, cleaning the drains. I, yes, I Cleaning yeah. the, the water. I remember it very well. Off, off yes. the road. Mm -hmm. There's none of that, no? No. The, the county council, say in County Clare, they don't, they, don't, they don't supply any service. They're all out to their private companies. Refuse, water, everything is out. Oh, yes, nothing. There's, there's one thing that struck me, and I, I referred there to Mary Honan's appearance with uh, Katie Hannan the other evening. And well done, Mary, you did a great job. But 20 million of taxpayers' money <laughs> spent on two referendums. And Mary hit the nail on the head when she said, you know, she's qualified in English, she, she has the degrees. And the wording was so stupidly put together. For the referendum, yes, yeah, that Podge and Raj couldn't even make head or tail of it. I know, but Pat, where is it gone wrong? Because, like, Mary and yourself are very sensible people. You see it on the ground. Mm. But the one thing is, with the advisors, the government advisors, the ministerial departments, all being paid individually, a hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, and. Nothing. It's an absolute mess. But John, I think I think some of it is a dement, uh, the atmosphere you live in. If you own a pub mm. and you socialise in the pub that you own and you have your customers, on your night off, if you go to your friend's pub yes. to socialise, you're in the same environment, mm -hmm. the same ideas. When you're in politics, or like any profession, politics particularly, you hang around with people you're you you like yes, but it doesn't matter what party you're with, and so you're in that bubble all the week. You come back and so you have clinics. You meet people, but the referendum to me brought out a whole, uh, uh, which is just no surprise to me. By the way, mm -hmm. I was not surprised by it. I'm not saying after the fact. I expected it to be to be heavily defeated. Yes, both mm -hmm. of them, and they were. And the fact that some politicians were shocked. Mm. I was a double whammy. Include the Taoiseach and the Taoiseach. Because whole communities have been affected by their policies. Small communities in every county in Ireland has been affected by their policies. Their policies on immigration. Now, we, we, we have been immigrants. I was an immigrant myself. I had no choice to get out in the early 70s and work. And go abroad and get work. And we've always been hospitable people to bring people in, to look after them. We brought them in, we'll bring them in today and we'll bring them in tomorrow. But there has to be uh, an order to everything. There has to be an order to everything. On that, Pat, what do you think, a lot of people would listen to your views on this, what do you think of Minister O'Gorman on the eve of Paddy's Day removing people sleeping on the street mm. in the tents in the freezing cold hail rain and moving them out to County Dublin to show to show a cosmetic oh we're fine in Ireland such disingenuous it, it revolts me really that's my personal view well he has been as an individual I don't know the man personally but as as a policy as a person in charge of a department he has been an unmitigated disaster. If he was in a private job, he'd have been fired years ago. So what the government? His capabilities, and his, he, he, he does not have the news, the understanding for the no. job. No. Every single thing he does is a fire brigade tactic. You know? No communication. With, if you bring people in, they have to be housed. We have obligations uh, under international law to bring... Um, people fleeing wars and all of that into the country. We have obligations under, under those particular treaties. Yes. But to bring people in, to put them on tents on the street, that's not a policy. That's a sticking plaster. That's not fair. No. That's not fair on the people coming in. And it's not fair on in Dublin either, where they're out with no, no toilets, no nothing. washing, nothing. nothing. I, I, I can't even think, how in the name of God do they live? like? But... That is reflective of the malaise in the government. I think every government, I've seen plenty of them, and you have to. Oh, God, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. There's a natural ending to some governments, you know, they, 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 they don't know how to pep, they don't know how to energy, they don't know how to see. And I think there is a tiredness yes. in, in, in that coalition now because Fine Gael have been with Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have been in government with everyone actually. Yes. Except Sinn Féin, they've been in government with everybody in my life, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, <laughs> you know, Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil and people like, well, we're just going off the stage now, people like Michal Man, people don't listen to them anymore. They're, that's a very good point. They're, the people are not listening. No. It, it's gone. I, ra- I read a, a very good um, article by David McWilliams in the Irish Times. Uh, it's two weeks old, but I only got a chance to read it this morning before coming in to meet you. But what he says about, you know, I know you, you, you like, if you like RT, but I, I have an axe to grind and a very serious public one. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I, I do, but yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's, it's the fact that we have a Minister of for Media who is a thundering disgrace, and I say this publicly, for allocating your tax money, your tax money, all our tax money, to RTE, who are a thundering disgrace themselves. Now, you made a very good point that if this was a Joe Blog company, gone into well, liquidation. RTE tried to do the right thing, mm. in my opinion, when the whole hullabaloo about the... I know, what yes. Was it, what, was that, what was that account? Was that the, the, the barter account. The barter account. account. I never... Oh, I, yes, yeah. yeah. I, I'm pretty sharp enough. I, I like thing in maths and finance yeah. and all that. I, I have an understanding of it. I never before in my life heard anything like that. Yes. But anyway, so be it. Now, Backhurst, to me, mm. was the wrong man for the job. He had been there before. He is, he's part of the circle. He has friends in there. Yeah. So when when uh, 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 when I um, heard of his appointment, the first thing I said, nothing will change much in RT under him. Dead on. You know? And mm. Can I so, just ask you another question? Why it's in my head. What do you think of... Um, I've heard some names in Limerick about the incumbent uh, T-shirt, but I won't repeat them on air. But leaving that aside, um, what do you think of uh, the incumbent Taoiseach when he said last night, I'm able for the job, I'm up for it, I'll serve the country. And yet, he didn't serve it with the children's hospital overrun of millions and millions. Oh, I don't know. People he, don't know how much that will be. He, he, no, but he misled the Doyle. It's on record. He misled the Doyle. Secondly, about um, the, the abortion referendum and all of that sort of thing, he, he did not handle it in an exemplary, qualified, professional way. And, you know, I, there's a terrible doubt about him. Now, Leo Varkin has been investigated by many times by SIPO and on and on, as you know, and uh, they've, they've, they've gone around in circles, and that, that's it. Yeah. Particularly with the, doc, the new doctor's contract. That yes. Time. Mm-hmm. I mean, he should have lost his seat. He should have been fired. Yes. If he wasn't across the water in, 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 in the other parliament, he'd, he'd have been forced to step down. But long ago. That's water under the bridge, you know. You can't keep going around in circles and having endless inquiries. I mean, you used to be, he was Minister for Health, of course, he as was. you know, as well, yes. one time. And the, the incumbent that's being crowned now, um, Harris, he was Minister for Health as well. He was, yeah. And we know in the Midwest area here, mm-hmm. it's been a shambles. Since I came down to Shannon in the late 80s, and it was, it was in a bad way. Yes. That's not the day yesterday. Mm-hmm. They closed Innes. Mm-hmm. That's right. They closed St. John's. <laughs> And they said, this is our new, our new job. And they're adding on bits to every day with 70 or 80 bits here and another few bits. They're adding on another bit and adding on another bit. In County Clare, the last time I looked, the people of County Clare pay the same taxes as the people in Dublin, same water rates, the same uh, insurance and everything. They're entitled to their hospital in County Clare. The hospital in Ennis should be open on a 24-hour basis, full-time. End of story. The same yes. with the same with Nina, and the same with Saint John's. How the management in 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 UHL haven't been fired is beyond me. The CEO that was there, Con, I think Cowan was her name. I forget her name. She's gone now, but she was a part time lecturer in UL whilst she was full time CEO in the hospital. But are they all? Political, I, mean, I, I don't know. How can you do Political all? decisions to say, well, look, I look after you and 
you look after but me. But you see, that's not it, really. Right. That's not... I mean, we can focus on individuals, which would be wrong in a way. But um, mm. the book has to stop somewhere. And if you're the, if you're the captain of the ship and it, 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 it's sinking slowly, you have to take responsibility for it, you know? Well, I cannot so, see Mr. Harris... Uh, having a reshuffle. I cannot see him make the decisions of getting rid of uh, Miss Martin, uh, Marcus, I was going to call her, but sorry, Martin, Minister for Media. Uh, I cannot see him getting rid of uh, Minister O'Gorman and other lame duck ministers because I don't think, personally, and I hope I'm wrong, that he will have the energy and the capacity to actually make the changes because I tell you something my own personal opinion I just want to put this to you as well if he continues on the same vein, vein as Leo Varadkar we're finished well we're falling into the trap now that the media wants us to fall into in focusing on individuals mm. and some of that is warranted and necessary as well yes you have to see have they the qualities necessary to lead the country have they the statesman like Qualities that we saw in some of the older politicians yeah. of our further generation. And there isn't any politician in Ireland that is heading, that you would say, that guy or that gal is head and shoulders above anything. They're wasting politics, you know. That's that's the way life is today. But Fine Gael, Fine, when Fianna Fáil went down, when the when, when the, the, the bottom fell out of their vote as a party, and they banged, they banged, they only had one doll deputy in Dublin. Remember? That's why right, I remember that. that. Fine Gael on the same boat now. A third of the party to date so far. Mm -hmm. A third of their sitting TDs now are not going forward again. So that's 12 TDs that won't be going forward again. I have a feeling they're going to get a, a pretty uh, seismic wallop in the local elections. That's just my own feeling. But in County Clare, I know they're under severe pressure. Now, obviously, if a TD is ill and they have a health issue, they can't serve. You know, mm -hmm. but there should be a, a, a some way. Whereas, if I have a long term illness and I'm a city TD, I should have a deputy to do my job. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unfair. You're disenfranchising the electorate of the county, you know, and you're a plug in to the government. If you're a government deputy, you're a, you're a plug in. Oh, yes. You're a plug in yes. that the people have to, to Dolly Young. So that's only just me. But I don't know. No one cares. It's very volatile. We have uh, four seats and. Um, mm. In, in the general election, I'm talking about, I think there'll be a general election in November. We'll be out, we'll be out canvassing in Halloween. October, November, you know, yes. Halloween. It's predicted. Yeah, yeah Halloween. Yeah. And uh, we'll have the, a new a new government before we'll be sitting down for a Christmas dinner. Well, this hopefully year. I can enjoy my be. turkey this year. No, the new government, of course, is an order. Well, it's you going see, to take I a long know. time. Yeah, it, it could, it could to settle in. And people are speculating at the moment that Sinn Féin will be in government. They won't, in my opinion, they won't be in government. They have no hope in hell. Really? I don't yes. think they have a hope in hell right. of being in government the next time. Oh, right. Well, that's interesting. I don't think they will. Right. But what, what is the rationale for saying that? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you to answer that. I mean, how, how, how many inspirational politicians uh, can you name in the Sinn Féin party that would say, I'll follow that person. Mm. I will certainly do my best to put my shoulder to the wheel behind that person or persons. Or the, or the ideology, what do they stand for? Are they left or the right? Are they centre left, centre right? Are they social democrats? What are they? I think the fear is among the electorate that they're still the highest rated party, even though they have dropped. Coming. John, now, Colin, you saw the polls. You yes. said the two referendums, these polls said the two referendums will be passed by 60 and 55%. Yes. 75% no. Going on 80%. So I, I, the polls to me, I forget about the polls. Oh, well, the polls, no. No, you are right there, actually. They're, they're only a snapshot, like yeah. a, a photograph. Um, there are so many things I wanted to talk to you about, but I'm going to come back to them um, when we do our next uh, interview. <laughs> but <laughs> when, when you're elected, yeah, yeah. and you will be. I like that line, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I will come back to you, you know. Yeah. But... Um, my diary will be full in, John. What? My diary will be full in. Well, I, I'll ring Mary Honan and she can book me in. <laughs> but um, there is one important point. Uh, I know about the bin waiver scheme because God knows we, we all need it. 
Yeah, it's something I was. I just about to say. They have it here on this county, County Limerick, mm. and uh, it's something that I would be absolutely committed to. Yes, to have because the cost of living is brutal. It is. It's yes, brutal, and it's not spoken about in the fire, You know, there's so many things, but the cost of living impinges on everyone. We have the proliferation of food banks all over the country. Yes, in a very rich country, mm-hmm. we have one in Shannon. Yes, I think there's two in Innes. And a few more around this, and we know a good friend of ours up the country in Tullamore. Yeah, uh, Ken Swan and I, if you're lucky at this day, we we do think about you. We may not let you know plenty of times, but he's a very, very, very good man, and mm-hmm. uh, we hope everything's going well for him. He's not very well, but right. we hope everything's going. And you're in our thoughts, Ken. But uh, the yes. bin waiver scheme would really, really help people. It's a small thing. Yes, but you know it would help people. And I think it's something that we should uh, certainly be advocating for anyway. You know? Good, well, I think that's going to go down very well with uh, constituents that you, you are covering. The, the, the hospital issue is very serious yeah. because closure of you said Johns and Ennis, for goodness sake, they should be, there should be open revolving doors there to, to help with the capacity issues. Of course it should. You know? But one other thing as well, and it's very important, reduction on rates. That's a big one, the property tax. I was uh, talking to a businessman in yeah. uh, Shannon, Shannon mm-hmm. Town Centre, if people are familiar with it, and that there's, there, are, there are as many empty units as there are full ones, and then it's, it's replicated all over the country, you know? Yes. And we, we, uh, <laughs> we in Shannon, we deserve better as a community. We deserve better. There's no doubt about that, you know? We should raise the bar a bit, very high, and okay. aspire to something higher. They might be used to. Yes. That's the way I see it, you know. And uh, this man, I was, I, I knew his father as well. He, the son is running the business now. I won't say what it is, because if I say what the business is, <laughs> everybody will know who it is. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, he said to me, I was just talking to him, just I was telling him, and he, was, he said he saw my well, a couple of my videos up about it, and I said I was. He said, I said what about us? There's no one talking about us. And I, I had to stop for a minute. The, 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 Small business who, who employs two or three yeah. full time and three or four yes. part time people yes. who who is the lifeblood of the economy? Is that the lifeblood of the local economy? Yes. And I said, yeah, the local property tax would be will be will be something something. Now, before he opens his door on a Monday morning, he has to find three thousand euro roughly. The first three thousand euro he takes into his till is old. It's not his. When you accumulate insurance, when you accumulate tax, mm. rates, water charges, when you put them all together and rent and uh, security all built in and refuse, refuse, and voila. My, I was got, I was looking around uh, his shop, I was saying, 3,000, it was still about uh, one or 2,000 boxes of yep. jump tax or whatever. Correct, yes. I was saying to myself, how are they doing it? But he was opening his door, I and I went away and did my own figures on there. But uh, you know, I, I realized that yes, he was spot on. You know, and then I realized why there's so many units empty, empty. You know, mm. the the rent and rates are almost the same in Shannon Town Centre as they are for the Island Centre in Dublin. And there's the, there's a footfall there. But you, you, you have actually hit another point, a nail on the head. I have interviewed people, farmers below in North Kerry. Yeah. People trying to keep the doors open and going yeah. down tomorrow to finish one in Abidorney. Yeah. A butcher trying to keep his door open. Hurling country. Abidorney is hurling country. Oh, country. Yes, I have to be very careful. There. I tell you. Uh, I mean, right. the, but oh, every single person that I've met in County Limerick or Limerick City, County Kerry, they all say the same. Ireland stops at the Red Cow Inn. Yeah. The rest is finished. With. That's where Leo Varadkar made the mistake. And that's where all his predecessors made the terrible, terrible mistake. I think that they have, uh, was it 33 seats now? I think they'll be looking to come back with half of them. Oh, definitely. Yeah. In less even. Because do you find there's a terrible anger? In the country now. Well, there's a quiet anger. I mean, as I said, I've been in houses, and uh, if you mentioned, I won't say any names. No, you know, no. Uh, we don't. We, we don't have enough money to be sold. <laughs> You'll be thrown out the window. Yes. 
and there is an anger but it, there's a simmering unrest and there's a simmering um oh god i don't know what word to use you know disquiet disquiet Maybe, yeah john and um and it's not one thing mm. it's two or, two or three things yeah. together mm -hmm. and some of it is the disruptions of people's lives some people mm. never really recovered since the since the, the appalling time we had during COVID. Correct. Some people haven't recovered no. fully from that. And that has to be acknowledged really, you know. And and they've 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 they're semi reclusive. They never really emerged fully from COVID into yes. what we call no what I don't know what normal society is now, but well, I think I do, but we stay normal I society. Have myself. You know, there are people living in Shannon. They have no money in their pocket on the Monday morning. Yeah. They don't have milk in the fridge. I know it. They don't have tea bags. No. They don't have bread. They don't have butter. They don't have jam. It's disgraceful. And when they hear people saying, we're one of the richest countries in the world, what does it mean to them? I go ballistic. I went into a house that. with, oh God, I nearly, I, I, I nearly cried to talk about now. Yes. And he, yeah, terrible, terrible. I, I can't even describe it. In Shannon Town in 2024, two small kids, black, gold, everywhere, a broken window, a fridge not working, one two bar heater in the room, in the house. And playing through the nose. Oh dear. You know, oh dear. Oh dear. The RTB, I, I made 11 phone calls that day <coughs> to the different agencies. And to say that they care on the phone would be an exaggeration. Now, I was able to do it because, I, but if I was him or in that situation, yes. you're just so beaten down. You're trying to get put shoes on your kids' feet to go to school. It's awful. Now, if I know that, mm -hmm. and I'm only going around since mm. I launched my campaign, it was last December, the 4th of December. If I know that, only since the 4th of December, how many more people are aware of those situations? And what are they doing or did they do about it? I don't know. I know you can't put out all the fires. I know you can't do that. But surely you can do something. But you see, Pat, I wonder, and this is not an excuse because I wouldn't cover those people or pretend even to, to make excuses for them. Are they caught up and so much caught up in a system that doesn't work and dictated to by government policy by people sitting on, pardon my language, on fat, fat arses in Dáil Éireann and Dublin that don't give a hoot about the ordinary people in the cities and the towns and rural Ireland. And this <coughs> is where you will make that difference, Pat. There's some truth in that, John. There's some truth in that. Sometimes people need to see things before they get the message. You're right about that. But there are people in politics for a long, long time that must have seen those things. Yes. They must have. And I would say they have. Yes. Of course it's, they have. It's, if we're a Christian country, we were at a talk the other night, uh, Mary and myself, we were at a talk the other night with uh, Mary McAleese. Oh, yes. yes. And uh, on being a Catholic in today's Ireland. Mm hmm I mean, you know, you don't have to be a Catholic to appreciate the talk, to appreciate the principles, forgiveness, and being friendly, being kind to kind, one another, kindness. Yes. yes, those are the things. Life is harsh enough. Ah, oh, it is. In in to open their door to another harsh voice might be the thing that breaks it on its way. Well, you know, all we can do, maybe <laughs> pray and hope, <laughs> yeah. but we need people on the ground like you, Pat, that oh, are well. genuine. I saw you get upset there, and that shows a huge 
encompassing heart for people in dire, dire need. And all I'm going to say, and this is not on your behalf now, I'm not saying your words, but I'm saying it from myself. Shame on the people in politics who have over nearly 3,000 euro a week, plus expenses that can actually drive around the country, have their clinics, and an Irish citizen that you came across in dire straits. You wouldn't get it hardly in Gaza. Well, the good news That's about that particular case is they have gone out of that place. Thank God. And uh, <laughs> and I met them recently. I actually ran into them, the, the kids at the, around the corners and back out of the shop. And the change, the physical change. is not marvellous. The physical change was the first thing that struck me. Mm. Less lines in his face. Yes, right. And the kids are just bouncing. But you see, there, there was a solution with your intervention. You see, that was it. But if we had, well, when you get into the council, that if when, because I know I heard great stories about you getting a great reaction. But because, no, you deserve it, Pat. And councillors who are on the ground, if they could just change the system where they're not in offices, scratching their heads, so what in the next thing are we going to do? That's the problem. It's the system. Well, um, John, it's been a pleasure, but it, 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 the people of Shannon Town, Six Mile Bridge, Newmarket and Fergus, Clonnara, Cratlow, and out of Shannon Banks, mm -hmm. I'll be, there'll be a, a, a knock on your door one of these days. And just open the door. You don't, you don't have to talk to me. Just open the door. And uh, I'll smile at you. <laughs> I'm here. Here you are. <laughs> there, be a, uh, there won't be a harsh voice at the door, you know? No. And I don't mind if the dog barks at me. I don't mind. I like dogs. Yes, yes. Well, I forward them myself. Yeah. Like I tell you, the barking is the simplest part of it. Yeah. And I wish, I personally, I've known you for a number of years now, yeah. in and out of the media. I know that. Your grant. And keep up the great work on the media, yourself and Mary Hona, and the yeah. two of you are marvellous. And... Uh, we'll, we'll talk again before June the 8th. Oh, yes. And we'll see how your campaign is going. We will, yeah, we will. Great. And uh, I'm, I must buy another pair of shoes on it because I know these ones will be worn out pretty quickly, you know, to get around to as many people as I can. But for people looking at this, look, I'll be in a position to work full time if you give your trust in me on the 7th of June. There's no problem there. You know. Very good. I'll be a good advocate for the. For all of you. I have everybody. Every, I have every confidence yeah. in you. Gordon Thank you, John. Thank you, man. Thank you for the time. And the Thanks very so best much. of luck. Thank you, Mary.